sit between these chairs here. You can see behind us that Seeking True Worshippers is the theme that we chose for the conference this year. And we um, are privileged, I'm privileged today to help start you thinking about mission. And that's why we're starting this <coughs> conference in this direction. As with, many, any, as with any conference, there are many behind the scenes things that must go on in order for it to run smoothly. So far it looks like we're doing okay <laughs> on this one. Um, and the same is true in mission. There are a lot of behind the scenes things that have to happen in order for that to go smoothly. And today I want to talk to you about one of them. Um, and that would be those who send. In particular, parents who send. And more specific than that, mothers who send. And you're going, okay, why are we going to talk about those who send? Hmm. Well, I have three reasons. Actually, I have four. Um, but the three that I initially came up with were, it's likely that some of you will be sent. It's also likely that some of you will be mothers. Hmm. And it could be, at a later time, you will find yourself sending your child out into missions. And the fourth one that I'm also keenly aware of is that some of you are siblings of missionaries right now that have already been sent, okay? Or maybe your parents, for that matter. Um, so regardless of whether or not you fit any of those categories or see yourself ever fitting one of those categories, uh, we're gonna t I ask you to come along with me today as I share with you some of the things I've learned in the 11 years that I have been uh, behind the scenes with my two daughters, Corey and Bethany, that should be appearing up there. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Bethany is in the middle. Corey is on my right, your left. They should look familiar. They are Calvary alum. So if you go back far enough, some of you know them. Um, 11 years ago, they became official church planters going to Guadalajara, Mexico. Now, it's been a very high learning curve for all three of us, and it still continues to be so today. For me, the areas that have promoted the most growth have been finding God's purpose for my life, dealing with loneliness, engaging in spiritual warfare, adjusting expectations, working on communication as a family, learning from suffering, and deepening humility. As I evaluated, I came down to the conclusion that what was really happening was I was learning dependency on God. Dependency on God. We fight it with everything that's within us, don't we? We want to be strong. We don't want to be weak. And yet there are times when it, is, it seems excessively difficult to be anything but weak. One of my family's impossible times was October 27th, 2000. And within a few months of this date, I would have learned some things about how to find God's purpose for my life. On October 27, 2000, my beloved husband, David, who was a church planter, who was a pastor, father of two teenage daughters, 48 years old, died of melanoma cancer. And then <clears throat> he was received into heaven to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You are faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. That's Matthew 25, 21. So as the weeks passed, I delved into scripture trying to figure out why he had, had died what I thought was relatively young. And also how I was going to go ahead and go on with life with the Lord without him. We had been married 25 years at that point. My first breakthrough <clears throat> in answering those questions came from Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not because of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> 
from good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Did you realize that God prepares good works <clears throat> ahead of time for you to, to do for the duration of your life down here? Hmm. These good works don't add to our salvation, but they do give us purpose and focus as we <clears throat> for how we face each day. And even though there were many things that my husband and I wanted to do, David's good works were done. The other things that we wanted to do, those were good things, but they weren't things that God had planned for him. He had run well. He had run strong right up to his last conscious moments. He finished well. And then he was able to go on to heaven. So there were two things that I came to my conclusions after I thought about all of that. One, God prepares good works for us to do long before we are thought down here. Therefore, that means that each day we should be looking for the good works that God has prepared for us to do, rather than wasting our life or just using it for ourselves. Hmm. I don't want you to take what I'm saying and think, oh, it's all about doing. It's producing. No, it's not. It is the relationship we have with the Lord. That is where the focus is. But because God has initiated relationship with us, he has also supplied purpose for us through the good works that he's prepared beforehand for us to do. Life becomes an adventure rather than doing whatever I want to do. That's good enough. Hmm. Two, since I have not been given the privilege to go to heaven yet, even though I'm very eager, I will have to settle for setting my heart on hearing my God welcome me home with well done, rather than settling for something less. Being single at this stage of life has been very hard. But, I have found that renewing my mind according to Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, helps me deal with the dynamics that singleness brings. Now I'm guessing that the bulk of us here today are single, and we're trying to figure out how to live life that way. Let me encourage you to take up that same challenge. Renew your mind with Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. Turn life into being an adventure of finding out what God is putting out there for you to do rather than just what you want to do. It changes everything in terms of the ability to get up in the morning and actually go forward with Him. God has been very faithful to me in these last 18 plus years. He's provided for me. He has uh, taught me how to do life. Keeps helping me figure out what priorities I should have. <laughs> and he can do the same for you. Before we go further, I want to note that the scriptures I'm going to give you today are not exhaustive. Um, that would take too long. Um, but I'm giving you the ones that I go to first when I'm struggling with these things. So let's fast forward to Saturday morning, February 20th, 2009. We are now in my garage in Raymore, Missouri with my two daughters, Corey, Bethany, a friend, Jenny, and we are packing my Mercury Villager <coughs> van. Jenny has decided to stay the weekend with me, very generous on her part, in order to help me through the ladies' first departure to Guadalajara. Now, another piece of this situation is um, that in anticipation of their work in Mexico, it was decided that we would swap vehicles. So the little white car that you see me driving around was actually theirs. And the white van that they're driving around is actually mine, theirs. All right, so here we are, <laughs> 18 years later. Um, and we prayed, they drove away, I cried, and I had both my daughters, who were the closest people to me on earth, and my van, that was closer than I thought, also <laughs> <laughs> leaving at the same time. I thought that was kind of a bum deal. But anyway, that was God's plan. Okay. <laughs> and the van has done very well down there, I must say. Ladies, take good care of it. Um, so there we stood, Jenny helping me out. 
And that was the first of many goodbyes. And the question again resurfaced. How am I going to do life with the Lord without them close by? Well, a few years ago, I did some research on what the parents of missionaries experience. And from those survey results, I found out that um, other than that initial <laughs> departure, um, the thing that missionary families find is the most difficult are the hellos and the byes. That's just the way it goes. Um, my ladies returned to Mexico on January 5th, and so we had to go through that again. Um, and I had to face again the aloneness in my life. So one of the passages I use to renew my mind about who I am in Christ in order to gain stability to deal with the loneliness is 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Or you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. God uses these truths to remind me that I am chosen, that I am not alone. He has purpose for my life. He has brought me out of darkness. I dare not walk as though I don't belong to him. Let me encourage you to let your dependency on God grow when loneliness and grief are pushing in on you by finding key scriptures that you use to renew your mind about loneliness. You will be cooperating with God's sanctifying work in you. There are other practical things that you can do and we can talk about that later. But the bottom line is, um, and the chief battle is, what we do with our minds, where we let them vegetate. Hmm. A hidden part of growth in dependency, also in missions, is spiritual warfare through prayer. As one of the missionary moms that I know said, if I had realized how much, I didn't realize how much spiritual warfare I was going to have to be engaged in because my daughter and her family decided to go into missions. I echo that reality. There are often spiritual battles that are going on that because of confidentiality reasons, you can't share it with anybody. It has to be very, very closed-mouthed. And when that happens, that's where the moms often come in. I also encourage the missionaries that I help prepare to go out to form around themselves a small band of people who are really committed to being their own particular prayer warriors. Usually two to five is what it will be.